Hey, Dion. It's Joe. This is what you should do, man. You should take this video camera and you should walk around the office or walk around wherever you are, maybe at Globe, and talk to people. And that's all you have to do. Just do that every day of your life until you get tired of it. My first impression was just a stoked Grom. He was uh, wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, just pumped to, to be around it. I mean, uh, he was videoing and, and kind of seemed like to me that he was where he wanted to be. Probably one of the most memorable sessions that, that I can remember having with Dion was uh, when he was wearing that, oh, he was wearing an orange shirt. I was like, whoa, that thing's bright. It was like a little left wedge, you know? And uh, he was just busting all these arrows. So I was like, all right, yeah, I gotta try to do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, while we were finishing that movie, Secret Machine, he was actually in Bali. And I remember the guys from Globe in Australia were saying, Hey, Dion just like went crazy in Bali. He's like, you know, got some of the best like aerial surfing that's ever been shot, blah, 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 blah. We had shot a little bit with him. Actually, we had a day in Diba that was um, unreal. He went crazy. There was these fun little ramps coming off like the little near side wall of Diba and, and Dion was just going crazy. So that was kind of like, whoa, he's in the movie. But uh, actually, when we saw the clips, we were like, wow, we have to use it. We ended up using his stuff for the closer of the whole movie because it was so unbelievable. So the last year of the juniors was when I like really focused and kind of gave it a shot. I ended up getting third. Like, the few years before, I kind of did shit, and then for whatever reason, it all came together in that last year. Then I went straight into the QS and just got so fucking hammered. He kind of was surfing a bit different to what the criteria was at the time, you know. He was like racing a lot of waves and just trying big punts and just one manoeuvre, you know. When the QS back then was like snap, snap, cut back, floater, fucking throw your hands up, get it all grooving. And Dion kind of wasn't that surfer, you know. He wasn't really that aggressive in the water. He was just like, this is not me. Like, I can't swallow this pill, you know. Yeah, I remember we had a meeting actually at Globe in Australia about it where basically we were doing that thing that's done a lot now, but it was, let's have a talk about whether or not you should be trying to be on the world tour. Dion didn't feel like that was the right place for him. And Globe was a company that traditionally, like, that's what you did. But it came at this perfect time, you know, where Dion, we, had, we literally had a meeting with um, Steve Douglas who runs... Uh, he was running marketing in Australia at the time. I'd been thinking about like a drive-through but on the internet and kind of shorter like little videos or whatever and and he goes look I've got this idea bear with me and he spat back the exact same idea just said look we don't want you doing contests like fuck that we want you just to free surf so for him to give me that freedom was huge for me especially at that age and um, Baron had just got back from overseas and we came up with this grand plan. And so when I moved back to the home, he kind of took me under his wing and was like, you just move in with me, it's sweet, like whatever. And I didn't have a job, so we started talking about doing this, um, doing the blog. And He'd never filmed a day in his life. And we were like, fuck, imagine if we just got to travel together and you could just film and like then it'd be perfect. So we came, we wrote out, I like, got on Word and like wrote up this full document describing like how Baron had filmed and like how it would be perfect if we travelled together, like came up with dollar figures and all this shit that we just thought was outrageous. We are like, we'll just pitch it to him anyways and see what he says. And we took it into Steve Douglas one day and we're like, Steve, we've got this idea, blah, blah, and he just picked it up. We were like, yeah, sweet, go for it. And I was fucking, we just lost our shit and then we've just been doing that for like five years now. Yeah, him, him and Kai taught me how to film and... Um yeah, I guess, I don't know, there wasn't too many people travelling, like TB had a photographer that travelled with him, but I don't remember having, like, too many surfers having, like, one guy just travelling with him, filming everything, and yeah, we didn't know what to expect. I know, you know, Dion and Baron had always had a great relationship, you know, and they always, um, you know, obviously enjoyed surfing, and uh, enjoyed having fun, and having fun was them going, travelling somewhere, and, and, and videoing it, and having fun with it and making making something that was different. I thought, Dion is a pro surfer, he's not gonna fucking spend the time and do this. It's gonna go for like six months and then he's gonna get tired of it, it's not gonna happen, you know? Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's what I thought. But you know, every time he put something up, I was like, wow, he put up another crazy little edit. I mean, it was consistent, it was always creatively really interesting and good. 
but like I was saying before, like I don't know too many other surfers that could pull off what he did because he could film. He, you know, obviously surfed really well. He could run a blog, like all the back end, like he can fucking do all the HTML shit and all that sort of stuff. That's what I mean. He was a geek at school and he just figured it out. Like normally surfers are just like, oh, fucking magazines. But he was like, the internet's going to blossom. And that's what happened. He just whacked that side up on the net, started putting D on TV where he was going, where he was surfing, people were tuning in. He pioneered being a nerd that knows how to use Photoshop, that knows how to use Final Cut, that knows how to, I think he pioneered that generation of surfers, you know? But I'm pretty sure it did just happen, you know, a lot of stuff, a lot of thought goes into what Dion does and he would have been planning it to the T, I think, and uh, just obviously nailed it. He did, he showed the way, like, as soon as he did that, I was just like, well, oh, fuck, I'm following the fish. <laughs> I'm putting my own vlog up, you know, like, so he started it for the surfers. I remember just having one of my friends film me for a couple of weeks and, and ended up a little, ended up like a little movie section and, and Dion put it on his blog and like I hadn't really had any exposure, you know, maybe one or two photos of magazines, but you know, nothing really online and, and Dion's blog at that stage was, you know, taking off and it sort of helped put me on the map, I guess. Hopefully it's a reflection of what we're all into. And if it happens to enrich the culture as well, that's just a bonus, I guess. But first and foremost, it's just shit we want to do, I would imagine. And Dion's just doing the shit he wants to do. It takes a lot for a surfer to kind of self-promote, and a lot of people look down on it. But I think it was Luke Stedman that gave him the first bit of advice when he was talking about his blog, and he was like, what do you think? Because Dion's not the type of guy to self-promote himself. And, and Stez was like, dude, if, if you don't promote yourself, who else is going to? And I think that kind of sat in the back of his mind for a while and got the wheels turning for him to actually show some initiative and working on his own films and make sure he's linking up with the right people and launching his website, which was, which was huge. And I think Dion surprised a lot of people because we basically had a surfer who's also a filmmaker making little pieces for the web for us and that's why it was so successful. You know? Yeah, it's funny. I was actually just talking today about how crazy like his whole journey has been and how just yeah, what what he does and what he's brung to surfing. I think he's just like a pioneer at what he's done, and that's rad. He's like a personality, not just a surfer. And the reason why kids in Texas or who knows where wear surf brands is not because someone got a 9.7 in their heat, right? It's because of the lifestyle. In every generation, there's a person or a few people who really kind of encapsulate that idea, and I think Dion kind of is that guy for us.